house sit now? You're supposed to say what? House sit? House sit? Yeah? Because Claire, Claire told me that, you know, in, in, in Hakka, which is the language that uh, she speaks, you have to, like, the how, sit, ma, the sit has to, like, it's got to go up an octave, so how, sit, ma. So, sort of like Greek, like, if you were to take the word, oh, I don't know, um, gentle, you say it as malaka. <laughs> if you were to say it differently, folks, it's a total different meaning, and I'll just leave it at that. And on that note, I'd like to uh, invite up to the podium Austin Hung and Elliot Noel. <laughs> We first met Claire about 14 years ago uh, at the Shad Belly program in Oshawa. Autumn. Nerd camp. Nerd camp. <laughs> Imagine 56 young adults confined to a university dormitory for 30 days with little sleep and hopped up on happy. A group of us stayed friends after that extremely intense experience. Fast forward 14 years, and here we are celebrating this momentous life event of our dear friend, Claire. Elliot, how would you describe her? Tall. <laughs> Is that all you got? Well, she's silly and fun. Like the time that she randomly head a me right here. <laughs> you probably deserve it. I probably do. Don't mess with Claire. She also loves to eat great food, travel, and she's always thinking of her friend. She's really caring, and you know how she loves to spend time with us whether going out or just hanging out. She's always willing to listen, always on our side, and really gives of herself. She also taught me my first Chinese phrase. What was that? Aya! <laughs> what else did you learn? Gao <laughs> Chao. What does that mean? Mm. <laughs> That's never a good thing. <laughs> you know, Claire has a really amazing smile. And she seems to be smiling a lot more now that she's met John. You know what they have in common? They're both tall. <laughs> they make each other happy. Right. They're both good people. Fair. But they're not so good that we can't impart a little wisdom. It's easy to forget all of the little things that make your relationship work. It's also easy to bring those things back into your relationship once you realize you've forgotten them. Spoken like a sage. Sappy sage. One nice piece of advice. Claire, John can't read your mind. But he should. <laughs> John, we like you. Take our Claire and take care of her. But if you ever hurt her, we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for us to wrap this up. I think I see some people sleep. Right. All then. A toast to Claire and John. We are incredibly happy that you found each other, and we hope that when you look into each other's eyes, you continue to only find the unconditional love that you already have for each other. To Claire and John, love and happiness. Gombi. Stin Yamas. Kiriis Λοιπόν, φάγαμε, ήπιαμε και σύντομα τη γλεντάμε. One of the most wonderful things about marriage is that it is not only a union of two people, but of their families and cultures as well. From the very beginning, John and I wanted this gathering tonight to be about celebrating this union. We also wanted to provide you, our honored guests, with a pleasantly new and different experience from perhaps what you're used to, especially when it came to the food. 
Being self-proclaimed foodies, we are thankful to the chef who was able to create a beautiful menu that incorporates touches of Chinese and Greek perfectly throughout. We sincerely hope that your culinary experience has provided you with some food for thought on different types of cuisine that you may not have considered previously. To the Greeks out there, may you now not be intimidated by the Asian food sections of Lavas. <laughs> to the Chinese in the room, you too can make a cucumber yogurt salad with feta right in your own home. <laughs> Speaking of cultural differences, John wholeheartedly immersed himself into my family's culture, having impressed my relatives in Malaysia not once but twice last year. He is so open to trying new things and has such a keen interest in learning about my family and the traditions and customs that I grew up with. I was so thrilled that all the, rel all the relatives kept raving about John being such a nice boy, so loving, polite, and well-mannered, and so very easy to feed. <laughs> to my auntie's heart is to eat up everything they put in front of you, and John was incredibly successful at it. <laughs> Even durian didn't put, it, put John off, which was impressive. <laughs> Why you hate feta and olives? You like durian? It's beyond my understanding. <laughs> anyway, I digress. As John continues to learn about my family's culture, I too have received an education in Greek culture. Thanks to John's family, who has been extremely generous in imparting their wisdom. In fact, I'd like to share some of what I learned over the years with you, in case you didn't know. Oh dear. The root of all English words is Greek. All the restaurants in Toronto were started by Greeks. It's really hot in Greece. Food is usually overcooked to prevent spoilage, since that's what they did in Greece, because it's so hot there. Kids are named after their grandparents, so if you meet any of John's cousins tonight, chances are he or she is named John or Sophia. <laughs> it is actually an uncommon practice to break plates at celebrations like this one, despite what you've seen in the movies, so don't get any ideas. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, the only Greek expression that I really need to know how to say is, Kalimera Papu Tikanis. <laughs> That's great. And you know, some things I learned from being around Claire's family. Greek women aren't the only ones who make way too much food and encourage their boys to eat way too much. <laughs> and yet it's considered rude to pile your plate high with food. So there are a lot of trips to the rice cooker. <laughs> it's really hot in Malaysia. <laughs> and although I haven't been to Mauritius yet, I'm sure it's really hot there too. <laughs> Meeting Claire's extended family in Malaysia was a somewhat stressful experience because I had to remember what to properly call each of the relatives. For example, greeting her aunts and uncles in Chinese, not a simple hello aunt or hello uncle. Instead, I was addressing each relative by how he or she is related to Claire as a sign of recognition and respect. So when greeting them, I was really saying, and I'm loosely translating here, hello auntie, the wife of the younger brother of Claire's mom, or hello uncle, the older brother of Claire's mom. <laughs> I had to draw a family tree and study it really carefully. <laughs> so this evening wouldn't be complete without a few special acknowledgements. We would like to thank everyone who has come from near and far to celebrate with us tonight. Special mention goes to those who have come from Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, Mauritius, California, Maryland, Vancouver, and Montreal. We are touched that you decided to make the trip just for us. To our wonderfully talented siblings, Sophia and Andrew, we feel honored that you both were able to contribute to our marriage ceremony with your musical talents. To Spiros and Ivy, thank you for being special witnesses to our marriage today and standing by us, not only today, but always. run smoothly, we recognize the extra commitment that is required on your part, and are deeply appreciative of your help and support both today and throughout our lives. To our parents, who are here with us today in body and in spirit, thank you for all the sacrifices you made for us, so that we could grow up to be good people, aspiring to do great things. The values instilled in us are what brought us together over four years ago and form the core of our relationship today. Dearest John, from the first day that I met you, I could tell that you were a kind and caring soul. 
I am reminded every day of how lucky I am to have you in my life. You are a comfort to me and keep me sane. When I am stressed or sad, you make me feel better with a big hug and a dimply grin. When I am sick, you lovingly take care of me, foregoing other plans and activities to keep me company. I greatly admire your easygoing temperament and positive energy, your ability to recognize what's important and to keep calm and relaxed in any situation is something that I admire and that I strive to emulate. The last four years together have been an exciting adventure. How rare and sweet it is that I found someone with whom I am so compatible, who shares my hobbies and interests and propensity for silliness. John, you are truly my best friend and perfect life partner. There's no one that I enjoy spending time with more, whether it be traveling to distant lands or throwing a frisbee around in the park. I love that you have embraced my addiction to volleyball <laughs> and attend early Saturday morning clinics with me when you could be sleeping in. And thank you for indulging in my all-time favorite TV show, Gilmore Girls. <laughs> It's a good show. <laughs> I look forward to watching the entire series with you over and over again. During our long married life together. On Blu-ray! <laughs> Thank you for loving me and for accepting me as I am, neuroses and all. You truly inspire and motivate me to be a better person and to recognize and enjoy all the blessings that I have. I know in my heart that we will have a deliriously happy future together and I look forward to many more adventures with you. I'm an incredibly happy man today. This beautiful girl, round of applause please. Yes. With her sparkling eyes and wonderful smile, married me. I feel like I'm living a dream. The amazing thing is that every day feels like this. Our relationship began just over four, four years ago over a coffee break at work. We quickly realized how much we had in common such as our love for uh, food and sports and trying new things, and it wasn't long before we were spending lots of time together. I like to do what she liked to do, or at least I was willing to try. Her ability to appreciate the little things in life makes every day an adventure. She is always willing to experience new things and encourages me to do the same. She helps me to grow, to not accept the norm, and to say, why not? But as many of you know, a loving relationship goes beyond this. It requires a caring and compassion towards each other, and a willingness and a commitment to make each and every day work, even if it requires some sacrifice on your part. Claire understands this, and this is why I love her so much, and this is why we are here today. I love Claire not only because she is smart and caring, adventurous, creative and independent, and she's all that and much more. I love Claire because she cares so deeply about us, about making our life together as good as it can possibly be. I know that with Claire in my life, every day is a good day. And our relationship continues to grow stronger every day. So Claire, I'm going to make you a promise right now in front of all these people. And if I ever forget, I promise you have 130 witnesses. I promise to cherish our relationship and continue to nourish it each and every day, just as you do. To never stop telling you how beautiful you are and how much I love you, even when we're old and gray. You are my best friend, my strength, the keeper of my soul. I promise to give you all my love now and forget and forever. Thank you for making me so happy. Uh, that's it from us. Uh, we're going to pass it back to our friendly MC John Panasopoulos. Not to be confused with me. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming. And, uh, in a few minutes, the party will get started. Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna watch the season over and over again. <laughs>